Well, let's start off tonight's show in Ethiopia, where the foreign ministry says that the country has made an official request to join the BRICS bloc of emerging economies. Now, of course, BRICS is a five-member bloc comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Together, the countries account for more than 40% of the world's population and about 26% of the global economy. Now, Ethiopia has the second largest population in Africa, but its economy ranks only 59th in the world. That's according to the International Monetary Fund. In its latest World Economic Outlook, the IMF revised its earlier forecast of Ethiopia's GDP in 2023 from $126 billion to $156.1 billion. But its economy is less than half of South Africa's, which is the smallest of the BRICS partner states. Well, let's now discuss this all with Zemedena Negatu. He is a global chairman of the Fairfax Africa Fund. Great to have you on the show with us. Now, of course, uh, let's start off with the fact that Ethiopia does have the second largest uh, population in Africa. But there's also the fact that its economy, like we said, is less than half the size of the smallest BRICS member, which is South Africa. What are the chances then that Ethiopia will be a strong member of the BRICS bloc? Right, Uche. Thank you for having me back on your program. And uh, as you as you as you did in your intro, the Ethiopian economy is today the third largest in Sub-Saharan Africa, and it's now 156 billion dollars. And uh, to answer your question, I want to give you some numbers. Uh, over the last 20 some years, it has grown by more than 1,400 percent. So it's it's had a very remarkable run. Now, of course, now it's pretty sizable, but some forecasts, then we also done some analysis. If it if Ethiopia sustains the kind of growth of about seven and a half, eight percent over the next ten years, its GDP would be more than double and would all be about thirty percent less than what it is from South Africa, because South Africa is growing by about two percent or less. So assuming that the same growth trajectory for South Africa. So today the South African economy is about actually more than hundred percent bigger at 400 billion than Ethiopia, but at the current growth trajectory, it'll come very close. In fact, by mid 2030s, early 2030s, again, assuming the growth trajectory of those two countries is sustained, it could actually equal the South African economy. But regardless, Ethiopia is one of the more, one of the bigger economies, the second most population, populated country in Africa, as you mentioned in your intro. So when you compound, when you add all these factors, the, the BRICS, they need anchor economies in each one of these continents that they operate. And then in Africa, it's Nigeria, Ethiopia, and South Africa, and obviously Kenya as well. So adding these will boost not only the member countries that are joining, but also the existing members of BRICS. Which Remember, the BRICS, that one of the key foundations or objective is to try to uh, rethink or rejig the global order that is in place today. The order that we have today was developed right after the Second World War. The Bretton Woods institutions were created by the United States after the Second World War. The United Nations, the World Bank, the IMF, which are still heavily dominated and ruled by the U.S. and to a certain extent its European and Western allies. So the BRICS are actually trying to challenge that and saying the world has changed, but these institutions, the world order hasn't changed much. Look at China. China... Its economy was nothing 30, 40 years ago. It's the second largest economy, and by mid 2030s, will be bigger than the U.S. economy. Already, on a PPP basis, the Chinese economy is bigger than the U.S. economy. So, the the world order has to reflect the changes that has taken place since 1945. And the BRICS not only are they an economic grouping, but they're also a geopolitical grouping. Mm -hmm. So, it's the the global South, as it's commonly referred to, is now trying to challenge the world order and saying, look, we're growing, we're coming, and then emerging economies, newly emerging economies like Ethiopia, which will be at the forefront of growth of the next 10, 20, 30 years, are also saying we want to be at the negotiating table through right. the BRICS and challenge the world order as it is today. And so from that perspective, I think adding Ethiopia as a member, uh, of course, there are other African countries, and I know Nigeria has applied and a few other countries have also applied, but adding these emerging uh, economies that will be the dominant features of the next 20, 30 years. I think we're not only enhance the BRICS strength and objective, but also, as I said, challenge the world order as it is today. 
Mm. Well, I'd actually like to get a sense of uh, your take on the prospects of Ethiopia uh, actually joining the BRICS right now, because as you mentioned, a number of other countries uh, are looking to join as well, such as Iran, and I think Argentina is right there as well. Some think that Ethiopia uh, trying now may be too ambitious, uh, because maybe besides its large population, what really does the country uh, bring to the table? What are your thoughts? Uh, Mm -hmm. Very good point. Remember what I said earlier. The economy has grown by 1,400% over the last 20-some years. Okay, it's an astonishing growth. Now, obviously, to sustain that kind of growth is difficult, but if you grow 8 9%, so Ethiopia has a lot to offer. Obviously, not only the population. Population, of course, matters. I mean, look at China, look at India. They use very large population to transform their economies. In the case of China, number two soon to be number one. India out of nowhere now the, has become the fifth largest. So we should we should actually emphasize the importance of large population, but harness the right way. So what are the Ethiopians' plans? If you look at their 10-year prospective plans, and even beyond that, they're looking at to be a transformed agriculture economy, a hugely transformed industrial base. If you look at the industrial parks that they built and they're going to be building in the future, the migration to what I call the industrialization will be actually a transformation of uh, feature of the Ethiopian economy. So, as I said, uh, if we just grow by seven and a half percent over the next ten years, it will be about a three hundred forty, three hundred fifty billion dollar GDP in just the next eight to nine years. At those kinds of growth rates, I think mm -hmm. Ethiopia can contribute significantly. What are its chances? I think is what you're saying of joining. I think it's a very realistic, good chance. Would it be here in the South African summit that is coming in August, or could it be at the next one? I don't know. But ultimately, the BRICS need dynamic growing economies, large countries like Ethiopia to sustain the ambitious goals that they've set at the beginning, not only to transform the, the global economic order, remember, and, but also the geopolitical order, and they need bigger countries like Ethiopia. And remember also, COVID has shown us a lot. The world is now looking at different options. I mean, you mentioned, for example, Saudi Arabia is looking to join or at least has expressed an interest to join this, this alliance. It, it was a very strong partner for the West. It will continue to be. By the way, these are not mutually exclusive. It doesn't mean that because you join the BRICS means you, you discard your existing other partnerships. It doesn't. It's just complementary. And in the case of Ethiopia, for example, it's the biggest trade, its biggest trading partner at the moment, the investor is China. OK, so mm -hmm. when you consider all these factors, I think it's, it's not unreasonable for Ethiopia to consider to be a member of the BRICS.